Hello and welcome accounting students. In today's lesson, we are going to be focusing once again on partnerships, but this time we're going to be looking at ledger accounts as well as final accounts, which obviously includes the processes that take place at the end of the financial year. So as usual, I'm gonna remind you, have your pen, paper, Obviously, your calculator, which should be your best friend when it comes to accounting, have your calculator in front of you so that you can work with me and you benefit from today's lesson. So let's get started. Right, so I already mentioned what we are going to be looking at in today's lesson, but obviously, being the accountant of a sole trader versus being an accountant of a partnership makes you wonder, makes you ask certain questions. So some of the questions, some of the thoughts could be, how is net profit calculated at year end? And how is that net profit shared between your partners? How does a business keep a record of total earnings for each partner or what each partner is entitled to versus the total drawings made by partners, okay? Right, so obviously these are the questions that we would have in our mind. Let's, let's move on. So going back to that global picture in terms of partnerships. So obviously we dealt with unique transactions in our previous lesson, and now we're focusing on ledgers as well as final accounts. Right, some of the key concepts that you're gonna come across in today's lesson, total earnings, I want you to look out for that word when I use it in the lesson itself, exactly what does total earnings mean? How is total earnings calculated? Absolutely important. Then the concept of appropriation, how does that ledger account work? And what does it mean when we say we are now appropriating net profit? Remaining profit and loss, a very, very important concept. We all know what it means when we say net profit, but what does it mean when I use the term remaining profit? How is that different from net profit? Right, so let's now look at what happens at the end of the financial year when you're doing or you're preparing the records of a partnership. Now, what I've done is I've summarized year-end processes, and obviously when I go into an example, I will then focus on the calculations in more detail. But remember, guys, this is a summary. So I want you to sit back don't relax too much, but you don't really have to take this down. This is something you've done already. So sit back, pay attention to the summary. Right, let's begin. The business calculates the gross profit using a final account called the trading account. So obviously at the end of the financial year, whether it's a sole trader, whether it's a partnership, you are still calculating your gross profit. And remember, as accounting students, we know what gross profit means. Sales minus cost of sales. What is my gross profit from buying and selling products as a business? So your trading account, exactly the same as a sole trader. This doesn't change. So obviously, on the credit side, we close off sales. After subtracting debtor's allowance, we know this already. On the debit side, we close off cost of sales for the year, and we are then able to work out our gross profit. Sales minus cost of sales. So as you can see, this stays exactly the same as a sole trader. So let's move on. What happens after I've calculated gross profit? Once you've calculated gross profit, the business then calculates your net profit, 
Okay, so net profit, remember, this is where I'm now taking other income, such as rent income, commission income, interest income, I'm adding this to my gross profit, minus other expenses. When I say other expenses, I'm referring to all your operating expenses, salary, wages, telephone, water and electricity, depreciation, trading stock deficit, obviously that list goes on. So when I take um, that particular calculation, gross profit plus other income minus other expenses, I am able to work out my net profit. Remember the word net, your final profit for the year after subtracting all your expenses. And the T account that we use for this, so there's an error here, it's not the trading account, so I'm just gonna cross that out. It's obviously the profit and loss account. So if we look at our profit and loss account, obviously on the credit side, we're still closing off the gross profit from the trading account. To that gross profit, we are adding other income. So obviously, income increases your gross profit. I've just written other income, guys. But remember, when we say other income, you've got to list each income. Interest income, commission income, rent income, you get the picture. Right, other expenses are then subtracted. And again, you are listing each expense. So when you now subtract your other expenses, you are then able to work out your net profit. Okay, remember net profit, that final profit. So as you can see, you're probably thinking, but hang on, this looks exactly the same as a sole trader. And that's true, right? You're still calculating net profit for a partnership the way you would calculate a net profit for a sole trader. So, so far, we should be fine because it's exactly the same. Right, now comes the change. Okay, so let's look at what happens next. We've calculated net profit and now we've got our partners that's saying, hang on, we now have to share that net profit. We're going to share we're going to appropriate that net profit. And how are we going to do this? By using what we call an appropriation account. Okay, so we've got one more final account. And that final account is called the appropriation account. So now comes the changes. Right, so after calculating net profit, I just want to read this, guys. The profit is then shared between the partners using an account called appropriation. Now, how do we share net profit? We're gonna now include the provision of the partner's annual salary, the interest on capital, bonus, as well as sharing of the remaining profit and losses, and all coming from the partnership agreement, what they initially agreed upon. Okay, right, so let's look at what an appropriation account looks like, because remember, this is new. You haven't done this before. So we start off the appropriation account by first transferring net profit that obviously comes from the profit and loss account to the credit side of appropriation. So in this example, as you can see, the net profit for the year is two million. We're now gonna start dividing that net profit between the partners. And remember, that division is not, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, okay? It all depends on what they agreed in that partnership agreement. Right, so in this case, Craig's salary for the year was 800,000, right? So we've allocated that on the debit side. Obviously, we're sharing this profit. Candace's salary for the year, 700,000, right? Then we've got interest on capital, and this will be for Craig and for Candace, 
300,000. So we've given them interest on capital. Remember, if you invest in a business, you are earning a certain amount of interest. Okay, so um, interest on capital, that's where it comes from. And then finally, dividing that remaining profit between Craig and Candice, 120,000 for Craig, 80,000 for Candice. So if you look at the appropriation account, and at this stage, I just wanna grab the calculator so that we all on the same page. Right, so we've obviously got two million as our net profit. Right, we've given Craig 800,000. Should have done away with the zeros, but it's fine. We've given Candace 700,000 in the form of her salary. Interest on capital for both partners, 300,000. Right, and at the stage, can you see there's a remaining profit of 200,000, right? So that remaining profit, we then give Craig 120,000. And then Candace, she got 80,000 as her remaining profit. And can you see we now zero? We've shared, we've appropriated the net profit. Okay, right, so let's move on. Okay, so then, further to the appropriation account, what else happens at the end of the financial year? A current account is also drawn up at the end of the year for each partner. Now, why do we draw up a current account? The account will indicate each partner's total earnings, in other words, their salary, plus their interest on capital, plus bonus, if a bonus was allocated, as well as their remaining profit and losses. So that current account is going to tell us what our partners are entitled to in terms of the partnership agreement. What else is in that current account? It's also gonna reflect the partner's total drawings for the year the drawings of each partner. Okay, so that's gonna be shown in the current account. Individual accounts because Candace could take advantage. She could take more than what she was entitled to. Whereas poor Craig could be taking less than what he was entitled to. So remember, your job as the accountant is to keep a record of this, right? And obviously, by you keeping a record, both partners will have that opportunity of looking at the books and getting that reflection of what has happened in terms of the partnership agreement for a particular financial year. Okay, right, sure, quite a bit, guys, in this lesson. Just very quickly, before we take a break, because I know you guys are saying, come on, Mahesh, let's have a break. But let's look at the current account, right? We're gonna do this in detail. But if you look at the current account for Craig, right? As you can see, there's a summary of what he is entitled to. So he's entitled to a salary. He's entitled to interest on capital and his share of the remaining profits. And then we've got what Craig has taken. So in other words, his drawings, what he has taken in the financial year. Okay, so we've got that record that is given to us. Right, so remember guys, I'm just putting up an example, but I'm gonna do this in much detail in our next segment. Right, I think it's time for a break. We've got to go for a break. So quickly go and grab a glass of water, uh, stretch a bit, and I will see you right after this break. Mm -hmm. 